Good morning, I'm just testing out my new uh, indoor studio space here. I'm trying to get all this set up so it's really convenient, uh, but also for the winter with uh, weather, you know, there's rain, even in the summer actually, like, you know, having the wrong light, having a clean space. I just want things set up so that it's really easy for me to shoot videos. And right now I just want to answer a quick question to just to test out this setup with the sound and everything like that, you know, and I'm just testing it out. So let's find out what happens. I want to talk today about a question I've gotten asked quite a bit, which is how to deal with greasy skins. This is a real problem and there's a little bit of a quandary. And the quandary is that it's not just like fat and flesh and then skin. Between the fat and flesh, there's a layer called the hypodermis. So that's like a bunch of uh, really loose tissue on the flesh side of the skin. They kind of like it meshes with the flesh and fat and it meshes with the main body of the skin. And it's kind of this transition zone of looser tissue. In a really fatty animal, that stuff, that hypodermis will actually be kind of like full of fat and embedded fat. And the fat becomes kind of maybe less and less as you get toward the real skin that you're gonna use as leather. I mean, this loose tissue I'm talking about is mostly made of the actual same stuff that the skin's made of, but it's looser and it's in like these big sheets and stuff. And then it gets tighter and tighter fibered as it gets toward the skin, but there's not really a complete distinct layer between those two things. So when you get this effect of that, that hypodermis or we call it membrane sometimes, layer being full of fat, that that kind of means that you need to either squish the fat out of that membrane or get the membrane off. Now, here's the quandary. The membrane doesn't come off easily until the skin has been treated some way. And the, the best way to get it off is to dry the skin and then re-soak it. And then it comes off really uh, much easier. But the problem with drying is if you dry it with fat in the skin, like a lot of fat, especially certain animals, the water will leave the skin and the fat will soak into the skin and it will cause something called grease burning, which will absolutely destroy the skin. I mean, I'm talking about like tear it apart, like tissue paper uh, destroyed. In a really fatty skin, some great examples would be like a bear, a pig, a skunk. Uh, these, are, these are really fatty animals. Raccoons can be really fatty and are difficult to get all the fat out because of this whole, you know, membrane hypodermis problem. So here's some things you can do. You can put sawdust, cornmeal, or like rotten uh, punky wood, like powdery wood from a log, dry powdery wood, um, on the surface of the skin, like flush it first and get what you can off, but then put that stuff down and let it soak up the extra fat as you're, as you're working. And it may also help give you like a little bit of grip or purchase on the maybe when you're flushing maybe another thing you can do is on a really thick tough skins like a hog skin or a bear skin say let's say this is the beam and this is the skin here and it's laying flush side up on the beam get a really sharp tool even like a big kitchen knife like a big butcher knife you get it really sharp and then use it to scrape the skin like a cabinet scraper like shaving it off you know instead of this kind of like using a dull tool like this like you usually do in flushing and sort of like pushing the stuff off or bulldozing it off you're actually kind of like shaving strips of stuff off and if you do that you can sometimes you know depending on the conditions and the skin and all that you can get through some of that stuff and take off that hypodermis membrane layer of loose tissue that's holding on to that fat now while you're fleshing the skin even if you're not getting that hypodermis off you'll see in in these really fatty skins where the the fat is like a incorporated into that layer you'll see the fat kind of squishing out and that's where the cornmeal and stuff can really help to just kind of like absorb a lot of that out and actually kind of suck it out a little bit and you can apply that several times another thing that always helps is washing you know use some kind of maybe like a dish soap or something like that get some uh, suds going on the flesh side rinse it off use warm water that'll help a little bit not hot just warm if you can keep your hands in it it's it's a uh, cool enough not to cook the skin. Uh, another thing is if you can get most of it off, as the skin dries, um, like I said, drying the skin and then re-wetting it is a really good way to get membrane off. So as the skin dries out, you may find it easier to start getting some of that tissue off and start getting more of the fat out of the skin. I'm not talking about like putting the hide aside, don't set it in the sun, especially like if, if you have any 
suspicion that there's a lot of fat left in the skin, don't let it dry in a warm place, especially not in the sun. But you may find that like if you let it sit on the beam for a while, you put some more rotten wood and sawdust on it and leave it for 15 or 20 minutes, you might find that as that membrane starts to dry out, you can get more purchase with the knife and it'll come off a little bit easier. So you can also try that. Another thing you can do is, okay, like I just did this with a sheepskin. So if you use alum and salt or a bark tanning, like a tannin, like a tannin liquor bath of bark or something, and you put the skin in there partially fleshed, it should come out of either one of those solutions easier to flesh further. So when you take it out, throw it on the beam, and then just flush it again and, and see how much more stuff comes off. Let it sit in there for a while and start to tan and shrink up and change. It'll really change the, that, that uh, membrane stuff on the flush side. And then try flushing it again and maybe, and all these things might just kind of add up, like you'll get a little bit more each time you'll get a little bit cleaner. The other thing is if you're tanning it with the hair off, when you put it into wood ashes or lime to take the hair off, those will form uh, soaps with the fat that's in the skin. So how do you make soap? You take wood ashes, you cook it down and create a lye concentrate. You put, uh, add that to fat or add fat to that, whatever, and it creates soap. It saponifies. So that essentially will happen to some extent when you put a greasy skin into lime or wood ash to remove the hair. And again, that's also going to change that tissue on the flesh side and possibly make it easier for you to get like another layer or whatever off. So right here, I'll link a video where I shaved down a piece of rawhide with a big kitchen knife using a turned over edge like this. And here's another playlist with some more tanning videos if that's if you're interested in that kind of stuff. If you made it this far through this video, you probably are. And there's my first test for my YouTube uh, studio thing, test thing.